Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so you hear over and over again how you need to have your ideal client avatar. You've probably heard that avatar, right? Exactly who your client is. Is it a, a female or a male? What age are they? Uh, are they in a family? Are they single? Where do they hang out? What do they read? What do they like? What do they dislike? What are their hobbies? And you're supposed to create this vision of the perfect client for you, your ideal client profile. And that's totally true. You absolutely should have that. But if you want to just sort of jump to the reason why you do that is because you want to get to what are their pain points and what would they be looking for from you. So I'm just going to give you one little piece today. And I go into this in a lot more detail with my clients uh, when we get to this stage. Um, you want to go, if somebody was looking for me, what would they put into Google? Right? Let's just take that one piece. So for example, if somebody was looking for me, they might write something like, how can I grow my coaching business to the next level? Or how can I grow my interior design business? Or how do I make my interior design business profitable? Right? So I coach interior designers. I also coach other coaches and online entrepreneurs. So no matter what service business you're in, you want to go, what are people going to be Googling if they're struggling and may need to find you? Right. So this is just one little piece of, hi, Kaden. This is just one little piece of the puzzle. When you create your ideal client avatar, you want to go through all their um, characteristics, right? Are they male? Are they female? How old they are? What are they reading? Do they have a family? Are they single? Where do they live? How do they live? What job do they have? As close as you can get, and usually a great way to do this is to think about a past client somebody who you have considered your ideal client in the past. But if you're at the point where you've yet to have your ideal client, it's still something that you can imagine and you can lay out. But one piece of that at some point, in order to know whether you are communicating to that ideal client on a regular basis, in your emails, in your blogs, on your Instagram, on your Facebook Lives or in your Facebook posts, is to know what their pain points are. Like, what would they be Googling? So if someone specializes in window treatments and you're looking to get people who are struggling with window treatments, what would they be Googling, right? How do I figure out what shape my window treatment should be? Or how do I find an expert in window treatments? Or um, the sun's coming in, how do I keep the sun out? of my home so that my furniture doesn't fade, right? Um, I'm going off on tangents here, but what would your ideal client be Googling, right? So in my case, it would be like, how do I start an interior design business? How do I grow my coaching business? How do I get more clients? Um, how do I market to, you know, should I be using Facebook for my marketing? Should I use Instagram for my interior design business, right? So I can actually go into Google and say, if I was my ideal client, what would I be typing to find me? And then I can make sure as Google gives suggestions, you'll see even more phrases that people might use in order to find you, what their pain points are, what they're struggling with. And you will be able to fine tune your messaging, your blogs, your Facebook posts directly to those keyword phrases. And those can even be blog posts for you. Those could be the subject by which you write your blog. Those can be the words you use to write a Facebook post. So when people talk about keywords, they're talking about what would somebody be looking for and will they find you using the keywords because are you using them on a regular basis in your marketing? I mean, this is something that I still struggle with. Right, because sometimes I just want to write what I want to write about, and I don't want to think about keywords. But if I want to be found, if I want my blogs to be found, and my Facebook posts to be found, and my uh, Instagram to be found, I need to be addressing 
what would somebody type into Google in order to find me? Right? What, what do I actually help people with? Oh, Caden just put in moneyrobot.com advanced to find money keywords to write blog posts about. That one I've never heard of, so I'm so glad you posted that. I'll check that out myself. So I can't go to sharing screen because this Facebook Live doesn't let you, but if you, unless I do it right from the beginning, but if you bring up google.com, and I'm going to do it on my other screen while I'm up so I can tell you exactly what happens. If you go to google.com and you go in the search bar and you start typing and putting yourself in the shoes of your ideal client and you type something like, where do I start to um, redesign my kitchen? Right? So a second thing came up, where do I start to redesign my kitchen cabinets? So there's one, two topics right there. Or you can say uh, kitchen, and I'm doing this for interior designers right now, kitchen redesign. So they could be doing kitchen redesign, kitchen redo, kitchen redo ideas, kitchen redesign ideas, kitchen redecorating. There's all different suggested phrases from Google on things people have Googled before. So in a coach's case, it's it could be something like, um, how do I grow my business? And now what came up? How do I grow my business on social media? How do I grow my business with Facebook? How do I grow my business online? How do I grow my, business, uh, my small business? All these phrases came up that Google now suggested to me as I was typing, and that tells me what people have searched for in the past. So one little tip today on when you're writing and you're trying to attract your ideal audience, your Facebook lives, your blogs, your Facebook posts should be about things that your ideal client avatar, your ideal client, would be interested in, like what they are searching for, what are, what are their pain points, what are they struggling with, that if they were struggling with it, they might need you. And if they found you, they might hire you. So that's my tip for today, that um, really hone in on your ideal client profile. And once you do that, put yourself in their shoes and do a little Googling to find out what they might be Googling also, additional phrases. If you are still struggling with trying to grow your business to the next level and you are an online entrepreneur, a coach, or an interior designer, and you haven't spoken to me yet, get on my calendar for my $97 reduced price strategy call. It's truly one hour of 50 minutes of coaching and I can move you off the fence, okay? And get you focused on what you should be doing every day to move your business to the next level, to become profitable. Okay, I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.